Give me a countdown. Hello, everyone, and welcome to My Jesus Podcast. And today we have Ken Anderson. We're going to be going over his testimony. Before we be begin, I would like to pray. Dear Father in heaven, you are our rock, our sustainer, our deliverer, our provider in our lives, Lord. I want to pray for Ken while he shares his testimony that you give him Help them to remember to be able to answer the questions. And may this testimony be a blessing to not only his life and the life of many others, Lord. Be with us now. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. I want to begin with asking you, Ken, about your childhood. How was, how was that like? Well... I was born on a farm 10 miles south of Hutchinson. My dad and mom were both Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, we milked a few cows, uh, cleaned gutters. Uh, of course, when we got old enough, we milked cows. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, Sabbath was a special day. We got up a little bit early because we wanted to be to Sabbath school on time. And uh, my dad was very prompt. Uh, life was good. Uh, we had all the food we could eat uh, right there on the farm. Uh, we had, mom and dad loved us, and uh, it was a good life. The kids in town didn't realize how good we had it. Uh, sure, they had things to distract them, but like movies and things, you know how kids are when they get with other kids. Mm -hmm. uh, we had mom and dad there and we had the neighbors, everybody knew us and uh, it was good, it was good. Uh, we knew that mom and dad loved us with all their heart. How many brothers and sisters did you have? I had one older brother, his name was Alvin, he's passed now. And then I had a, a sister that was just younger than me. Her name was Harriet. Uh, she went on to school and became a church school teacher. Uh, very nice home. Married, married in Anderson, in fact. She, <laughs> uh, Wes Anderson, she married. And they were Seventh-day Adventists, so mm -hmm. from the Ruts. Uh, that was good. So one brother, one sister? Two sisters. Two sisters. There's one younger than I, that's the baby, mm -hmm. and today she's still living. She's wow. 84, I believe. 84. She was six years younger than I. Mm. Good, strong seventh day Adventist, believe in Jesus. Praise the Lord. How, how big was the, the farm? It was 80 acres. 80 acres, wow. Uh, and it was southwest of Hutchinson. Very good land. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it wasn't quite enough, but my dad and mom made it. My mother could take a, a few scraps out of the pantry and make a feast out of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how she did it, but you know, it was good, wow. very good. So you attended the Hutchinson Seventh-day Adventist Church? Yep, that's where we went to Sabbath school and then uh, I was baptized. Uh, when I think I was 15 or 16. 15 or 16. And uh, church school. I didn't go to church school. Uh, in fact, none of my siblings did. Uh, that was 10 miles to drive to town and 10 miles home. And, uh, <laughs> you know, gas back then was only two bits yeah. a gallon, but still that was a lot. What, so, what year was this? I was born in 1934. 1934. And uh, started school, at, I guess I was six, mm -hmm. in the country school. Graduated from there and went on to Maplewood Academy. Oh. 
uh, spent just about three years there. And then I, I made some bad decisions mm. <laughs> and things weren't so good after that. Mm. So bad decisions like after your high school? I wasn't even out of high school. Uh, the reason they kicked me out was oh. I wound up over the girls' dorm when I shouldn't have been there. Okay. And, and that day, they were pretty strict. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was a goof off. Mm -hmm. I deserved to be kicked out. Mm. I deserved it, I'm, I'm, I'll admit it. But anyway, I was angry. Okay. And what, what kind of stuff did you struggle with? Um, like, I, I know you struggled with smoking. Was that around that same time? Yes. Uh, not only did I start smoking, uh, I started drinking. And uh, it just about took my life. That's a bad idea, but I was angry, and you know, it uh, seemed okay because I was angry. And you, your parents weren't drinking or smoking. Oh no, my parents uh, shed many tears about me using alcohol. They loved us, even st even though I did things I shouldn't have done. And. Was it just you of your siblings, or? Well, mostly, uh, I had a couple of cousins that were my age, too. And uh, we ran around with a kid that was smoking, and of course, he shared. And when you're that age, it's really easy to get hooked. Uh, you know, and your buddies, yeah, here, have, you, know, mm -hmm. you say, see. So, I smoked the first one, and I got sick, and I said I was never going to ever touch that again. Mm. And uh, a few weeks later, somebody gave me another one, mm. and there I was. And I, I smoked up to two packs a day. Wow. So how, how long was this time period? Uh, well, the... I smoked tobacco until I was about 30, 30, 30 years old. And uh, of course I used alcohol too. I know you were, was it trucking? Yes. Or? I sat in a two ton truck uh, many, many hours, probably too many. Hmm. Uh, we had four kids and they were at home and I, I bought this trucking outfit, and I did very well. Yeah. In fact, I did so well that I, a lot of times, didn't get home till eight, nine, ten o'clock right. at night. And you know, my my family suffered because they were already in bed when I got home. Mm -hmm. They were in bed when I left in the morning, mm. and uh, working, making a living for the family was. Uh, had, is what I had my sights on, and I had no education, so I had to do it with my back. Wow. And uh, I'm sorry but I, for my wife and my kids uh, that they put up without me. But the kids all tell me, I apologize. I told the kids, I'm sorry I did that. Uh, and they all say, well, Dad, we had a perfect life. Mm -hmm. Don't feel that way. Well. Uh, and I believe them. I believe they feel that way. Oh. But I think I could have spent a little more time <laughs> teaching them yeah. as they grew up. About what time did you meet your wife? Uh, well, uh, I was, I think I was 20, 20. Maybe on the back end of 19, and she was uh, a sophomore in high school. 16, okay. 15, somewhere in there. So it was 
So you were 20, but she was at Maplewood Academy? No, she was went to the public school. The public school. Okay. Uh, at, by that time, I was just wandering around. Oh, okay. You know, I did little jobs here and there and kind of scraped out some food. and uh, Things were pretty wild. And uh, I went to a bar with her sister and her brother-in-law. I met them there. Mm -hmm. And then when we got time to leave, uh, why don't you come to our house? Mm. So I went home with them. And my wife, girlfriend, well, she wasn't even my girlfriend. I met her there. Oh, you met her there? Yeah. At the bar? No, no, at their house. At their house, after okay. After the bar. Oh, I see. Uh, and I, I kind of knew she was the one, <laughs> if she'd have me. Oh. So this is your 25th wedding anniversary? Yes, yes. And you were married how uh, long before we, she passed? We were married 62 years. 62 years. Yep. And I always felt, thought she lived so healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, I always thought I'd go first, but here I am. Here you are. Uh, you know, the devil knows how to hurt you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I miss her every day. She was my rock. Uh, about what? It's been how long since she's passed? She, she died in what year? But. 2018, the end of 18, or the start of 19. Okay. It was very, yeah. And your wife's name is? Margaret. Margaret. Her name is Margaret, Margaret Louise Houck, H-O-U-S-C-K. Mm -hmm. uh, she was pretty much raised on Minnetonka, and uh, that was right down my alley to go swimming and Mm. Have fun at the lake. Your wife comes from a Catholic background? Yes. Yes. Uh, her mother uh, and her uh, used to go to church together uh, at Mount Minnesota. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, we were married by the priest there at the Mount Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And uh, the priest wanted to give me instructions, which I guess was all right. Mm -hmm. But him and I had a little difference on the Sabbath okay. and a couple other things. And he told her not, not to bring me back mm. and don't marry him. Mm. And she said, well, I'm going to marry him. And he told her, I'm not going to marry you if you stick with him. So, but he did, mm -hmm. and uh, of course he said it wouldn't last. Uh, a lot of people said it wouldn't last. Wow. She was 18 and I was 21. 21, wow. Just baby. So, so what brought you back to the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Uh, well, there was a long road and uh, to get to the meat of it, I, she knew that something was wrong. And I had read some of the books, or books, the SD books. Mm -hmm. And uh, she knew I would read them. She said, Dad, you're not happy. And I said, oh, I'm all right. Because I would promised her that she could raise the kids Catholic. And mm -hmm. of course, she would be Catholic. Mm -hmm. And she, we were pretty close, and she kept saying, Dad, your eyes tell me you're not happy. They don't bounce like they used to. You, you don't look at me with that spark. Mm -hmm. uh, something is wrong. Mm -hmm. What is it? And uh, I finally said, she finally said, you want to go back to your church, don't you? And I said, yeah, I do. And she said, well, go ahead and go. I won't stop you. 
And I sat there for a while. I said, Mom, I can't go without you. And she thought about it. A week or two went by. And uh, I don't know, we've been praying about it. And then uh, I said, why don't we pray about it again tonight? So she knelt down on the one side of the bed, and I was on the other side of the bed, and we begged God to give us a dancer. And uh, when we got up from her prayer, she said, why don't we go to church tomorrow? And I'll try it. I just want to see what it's all about. Wow. And so we went to church and never looked back. Wow, how old were you at that time? Oh, probably 35. 35. That was the first time. So that is quite a, a span of time. <laughs> to leave the church at around 18, 19, yeah. around there. Look at all those years I wasted. <laughs> mm. My experience. <laughs> God's been good to me. Yes. Uh, I want you to share uh, your how you smoke. You stop smoking. Uh, <clears throat> as I said, I was a truck driver, mm -hmm. and I ran out of cigarettes someplace between Big Lake and Becker, mm -hmm. so I stopped. And Becker bought a pack and, of course, opened them. And, uh, sometimes if you you'll cough as you're inhaling, mm -hmm. you get a really bad taste in your throat. And I was thinking about quitting anyway. Mm -hmm. And so I threw the cigarette out, and I reached in my pocket, got the pack, and I threw it out, and I could take it right to the spot where it landed up by Becker. Uh -huh. And somebody told me one time, you mean you threw a whole pack of cigarettes away? <laughs> I said, yeah, if you got some uh, you want me to throw away? <laughs> so God, oh, oh, God was good to me. Wow. And then we had this problem because my wife smoked too. Oh. And uh, not as many as I did, but she she smoked, mm -hmm. and they were Marlboros. You know, you see this cowboy riding off into bliss. Really, he's going out over the hill and dying of cancer. <laughs> anyway, uh. she said, "Dad, I want to quit smoking," and we prayed about it, and she got a couple of days in, and I knew it. When I walked in the house, I opened the door, and boom, there it was. And she was sitting in the chair crying. And I said, Mom, there's lots of innings in a ball game. I said, don't give up just because you lost that one inning. Try it again. So she tried about five times. And uh, she finally made it very difficult for her. Mm. Yeah. God is good. And, you know, sometimes you talk to people that say, I just told the Lord I wanted to quit, and it was gone. I never craved it. Uh, that didn't happen to me. Mm -hmm. I run into smoke coming out of the door when I went in it would, into the, one of the hospitals or something. There'd be a fresh cigar or a cigarette, and I just craved it. But you know, after I got one or two days in of not having the tobacco, then I had something to lose by taking another one because I had been right back at zero. Mm -hmm. And I kept telling myself that, and you know, after quite a while, uh, I was free. And today I can't stand the smell. Mm. Uh, it just irritates me. I don't crave it at all. I want to get out of there. Yeah. So, you, was drinking or smoking more of an issue, or they're both? Well, <laughs> I, I, I did like alcohol. 
Uh, my father-in-law always had a case of beer there. Mm. And of course, he was generous. Mm -hmm. So I drank with him. And then uh, just started in with going to a dance or two here and there. Mm -hmm. And there was always alcohol there. Yep. And I got so that I drank every day. And I really did have to have it. It was really an upset me if I didn't get a drink or two. Yep. And so often it was more than that. And that was another hit because my kids were at home and I'm standing in a bar someplace mm. wasting time that they should have had. I'm sorry for it. So sorry. Uh, there again, uh, by actually by an accident, uh, the mechanic that took care of my truck greased them and changed all the little fix them. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, he was an alcoholic, and I knew him before I started to drink. And he worked in that garage all day. And if somebody came in and gave him a bottle, he would drink it all. Mm. And his wife would get him in the back of the pickup. And if the gate on the pickup was closed when they went by our, mm -hmm. our station, Harvey was in there. Mm. And she'd drive that car or the pickup into the garage, shut the door. And when he sobered up, and he did it the next day again. And so he, he, was, he was really wise. He asked me to go to, to AA with him. Mm. And uh, I, I said, I don't need to go to AA. I'm not a drunk. He said, uh, would you do me a favor and go just this once? And I said, well, yeah, I guess I could go. So I went. And uh, it was under protest. But I liked him, and I didn't want to disappoint him, so I went. And there was a speaker there at that meeting. Well, there were a number of them that just got up and said, you know, they had to have it every day. They weren't really, they really didn't help me much. But this guy got up and uh, his name was, uh, that slips me. Anyway, he was from St. Paul. Mm -hmm. And when he got up to speak, he looked, his face looked like he had been beat up by every single person in St. Paul and been in the gutter and been, you know, just all cut up. And, mm -hmm. Anyway, he got up and he looked the crowd over a little bit and he said, you know, I didn't come out here tonight because I didn't have anything to do. He said, the reason I came out here to speak was I thought maybe I could help one person to see what's happening and get them some help. And I sat there and I watched him and he told a story. And uh, it probably wasn't really. And it, it's not, it was not the story that you tell in church. But when he came to the punchline, a lot of people laughed. I did too. Mm -hmm. And after a few seconds, I looked at him and he looked at me and it was so he was talking to me when he said, if I could help one person and my laughter turned to tears. And I went home sober that night. My wife couldn't believe it. From that time? That and I went home sober. And she, uh, but she was very coy about it. She just accepted me home and hurried up and got things all nice for me. And hmm. uh, that was my first night. Second night, I came home, and boy, I was sick. I had, prior to that, I used to buy bottles, big bottles, and then I'd mix that and drink. And I had about that much and a quart of whiskey, 
sitting in the refrigerator. And she thought that sure I was going to have some, and I didn't. And boy, did she have the supper on the table in a hurry. And she just told me she was proud of me. That was all. I was home sober, and I, you know, meet the kids and play with them and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, she was worried it wasn't going to last. Mm. But you know what? I saw myself down there. The actor in that story he told. And I thought, man, that's me. That's me. Every day I do that. And I'd, I'd stop in down at Harvey Station, the guy that introduced me to AA. And he would always encourage me. And he said, I'm not encouraging you because I'm so worried about you. But he said, I'm encouraging me. He, still, I, he said, I still have the urge. And so God was good to me. God was so good to me. He, he took it. I had to struggle. He made me struggle, but I had to. I got rid of alcohol out of my life, and I've never been sorry one minute. Praise the Lord. Yeah. How, how has being uh, a Christian been your day-to-day -day life? Oh, <laughs> I love it. I love it, and you know what? My neighbors love me, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I haven't had really had any struggles. Uh, my wife, of course, always on Friday, that was uh, pre preparation day. There was always mm -hmm. plenty of food. And mm -hmm. Friday night was a time when I relaxed and spent time with the kids and just was really, it was good. Mm -hmm. It was good. And of course, when she, she's a Catholic yet, you know. Yeah. When we finally c come down to the end of the story, uh, she joined the Seventh Adventist Church. And the biggest reason was she wanted me to be happy. Mm. And after she did join, she became a terrific leader. Uh, she'd push me. Uh, we used to go out and do lots of visiting. Sometimes she'd say, Dad, I don't feel like going after church. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd say, well, no. Maybe this is the call that will change that guy's heart. Wow. And you know, we did, we kept on, we were patient. I took Sabbath school quarterlies, all the most of people that weren't coming. And uh, one day we went to this one man who was he had been said he'd been hurt by the church. And I'd heard his story so many times. And this was a hot afternoon. We were working on the building. And I was tired and sweaty and had cement dust all over. Mm. And But I said to Mama, I said, we got to take a, a quarterly out to over. She said, oh, are you going to stand and talk for, for an hour? <laughs> I said, no, just give me 10 minutes. And I walked in with his quarterly, and he started to tell me his story about why he was hurt and disgusted with the church. Oh, mm. well, I, I, I could repeat it to you still. Anyway, after about five minutes, I said, Albert, we've been working on the church. I'm sweaty and dirty, and I really want to shower. My wife is in the car. I said, I have one question for you. And I said, you don't have to tell me the answer. You just tell yourself. I said, if Jesus comes tonight, when, any time now, in, mm -hmm. in a few minutes, right. soon, are you, is your conscience clear that Jesus is going to take you with him home? And he looked at me and he kind of, I don't know, blinked a little bit, <laughs> didn't say anything. I said, don't, don't answer that. But I said, I believe it. And I asked the Lord to bless him. 
And the very next Sabbath morning, he was in church. Praise the Lord. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> so good. Well, that's one of those, um, you got to check yourself. <laughs> yeah. Those questions. Yeah, uh, why? Conviction. Why am I discouraged? Yeah. That's a, that's a strong question. If Jesus were to come tonight, are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? And, and I know your kids, I know you probably pray for your kids sure. that, that, that they will be ready for Jesus' return. Amen. And, and <coughs> are they still living? Uh, the, the oldest one passed away. Uh, he had some sort of, I think they called it picks. But he passed away about four years ago. He was 62. Uh, served in the military for 20-some years. And, uh, you know, pretty much all over the East. And then, of course, the next one is uh, married, has two kids. A good Christian man, but not Seventh-day Adventist. And then I have a daughter down in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. And I call her and I ask her if she's ready. Did you go to church Sabbath? And most of the time the answer is not favorable. It isn't the one I want to hear. But uh, I'm still praying for her. There's a church not too far from her. Uh, she knows where it is. And she's, Dad, I got to take care of Pete, her husband. And I just don't have time. And I said, well, take Pete with you. But I put, you know, you don't want to push too hard. So, uh, no. Uh, my youngest son went to Union College, uh, got good grades, good. He loved it. He sings. He sang in all the the quartet down there, the uh, big choir, and uh, he loves singing. And he says he loves the Lord, mm -hmm. but he doesn't show it by attending church, or he hasn't for some time. Now, his wife is another uh, Christian group out there, and they do, he goes with her. And uh, I said, well, you know, come to St. Cloud, come to our church. I said that Becky was raised Seventh-day Adventist, his wife, and you were raised Seventh-day Adventist, come to our church. Uh, she's got something uh, about the SDA church. She felt she was news right or something, and I can't get her over that. I don't know how to get her. <laughs> so here I am. I, I don't want to go to heaven alone. Right. I right. want you there. Amen. Yeah, that's the character of Christ. He wants yes. everyone to be yes. to save. Yes. He doesn't want the wicked to perish. He tells no. us to, to turn from your evil ways and live. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And that question, did you go to church today? You know, if, if you have a relationship with God, you'll want to go to church and be a blessing to others and share how God's worked in your life. It's, it's the highlight of the week to go on fellowship with all the other people that are here. And, you know, sometimes I wonder, is it really so important? I study, but I have a school lesson, and, and I have certain preachers that I really enjoy on the TV. Uh, we have many good preachers. But you know, I don't think I come here because I need anything special. I think God says, go and you be special for somebody that's hurting. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, when you get my age, it's a little work to get, yeah. get to go. But I would not consider not coming to church. That right. is not an option. Uh, and Dave says he'll bring me. Uh, he said, if I have to drag you in by the feet. <laughs> he, yeah. didn't, he didn't mean that, but he, mm -hmm. you know that they go out of the way to, 
to get me in this chair, and mm -hmm. people have to come and get me and bring me home. Uh, I've, mm. I've, I've wanted to pay somebody to do it, and Dave said, no way. He said, I'll be over and drive you, and we'll pick up the other members that ride with us, and I enjoy that. I enjoy the visit with them, too, on the way to Sabbath School and on the way home. So, uh, God has sure been good to me. Yeah, you telling how you were talking to your kids about, did you go to church today? That was something that got me back in the church. My dad telling me, did you go to church today? Telling me about this church. Did I go to, because I moved here yeah. from Texas to Minnesota, and he, there's a church nearby here. And for some time I didn't attend, but he always encouraged me to go to the church because that's where you'll grow in your relationship with Christ. And, you know, look at all the good things that have happened to you. And look at all of the blessings that you give to the church members by attending here. <clears throat> uh, the blessings are, you can't count them all. And then, of course, the fellowship dinner. Right. Uh, it's nice because you get to talk to people and encourage you. Or they encourage you. Uh, my wife said I was the number one visitor. Uh, she used a different word, uh, gabber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gab all the time. Mm. But uh, I like people, and I want to know. I ask them questions. Uh, where do you work? How old are you? What's mm. your, you know, what's your background? Did your mom and dad be Adventist? Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I just can't help it. Yep. And if they are a little weak, I want to do something to encourage them. Uh, there's a lot of people uh, that we can encourage just by your presence. Right. Yeah, it's encouraging to see you talk with the members. <laughs> uh, I love it. I asking love it. how was how was your week? Uh, yeah. How are you living? How <laughs> you know, and you, you can, and you praying with them, encouraging them, motivating to not give up, to that there's hope. Keep looking up. That's okay. the answer. In this world, and all of the distractions around you, you, you that's the only thing to look up. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Bible, it says that the people were all dying, the children of Israel. And Moses made a cross oh, and put right. the snake on there. Mm -hmm. And then he told him, uh, if you look at that, you won't die. Right. And those that did look didn't die, but those mm -hmm. that did look did. And today, I feel we're in that same situation. Mm -hmm. Long as we look up and study about Jesus and know those Bible stories, Yes. We can encourage others. I love it. Yeah. As we're closing, is there any closing remarks you'd like to share? Something you think about before you go to bed? Well, you know, I'm 90 years old. <laughs> and uh, I do thank the Lord for every day. But I do look forward to the day when the trumpet will sound and the Lord will descend and it says the graves will open and we'll all be transferred to heaven. I look for that. Uh, it's in First Thessalonians, I believe. Yeah. Uh, it's just a, such a nice promise. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm... I remember the day my mother passed away. Uh, it was on a Sabbath. Instead of going to this church, I went down to the hospital and spent Sabbath school time with her because others were going to visit. They were at church. So, mm -hmm. And she said, uh, 
as I went to leave her, she said, Kenny, no, don't cry. Don't cry. Hmm. Don't cry. I hurt. Uh, but she said, I know when Jesus comes, he's going to open my grave. And she said, I'm going to be able to look square in his face. And what a comforting thing for me standing there. Right. Uh, or, I don't know if this interests you or not, but uh, at my mom's funeral, it was probably 80% music. My wow. cousins, my uncles, my kids, they all sing. And my sister's kids, too. And the uh, funeral was just about all music. And our pastor at Buffalo at that time was attending Buffalo Church. Uh, he said to me, he said, uh, he said, I don't know, I'm not related, but I went to Martha Anderson's funeral, and he said it was the best funeral I've ever been to. <laughs> well, he was enjoying the music. I was crying, but uh, what a... What a testimony. Mm -hmm. It was just so blessing for me. And uh, Do you remember any of those songs? Oh, no. sure. Under His Wings, uh, There'll Be No Dark Valley. Uh, uh, oh, there's a ton of them. Mm -hmm. uh, No, I, I'll just waste your time. My, my memory won't go, but there's one, there's, there's one, uh, oh, it was special to her. Yeah. <laughs> my, you know. Yes, it's okay. <laughs> it's good. It's been good, Axel. Yes. And I, I enjoy coming here and just last Sabbath morning, when you stood up here and sang that song that Pastor asked you to sing at the close, I mm -hmm. thought, oh, how blessed we are to have Axel here. And uh, anybody that thinks that they're not, that they're not affect anybody here, mm -hmm. they're wrong. They will get affected, and they will affect somebody else to come be a part of the family of God. Uh, yeah. Uh, they, well, please close this, Ken, with prayer. Okay, you want me to pray? Yes. Father in heaven, we're grateful that you keep us safe. You keep us in a good place. Uh, we're blessed because we live in this part of the in part of the world where we have a warm bed at night and all the food we can eat and and actually it's a good place to live and as I drive around as I go shopping I see people that have nothing and I feel so bad and uh, I just I just would like to feed the whole world, but you can't do that. Uh, so we share as we can, the best we can. And we thank you for blessing us. I thank you for blessing me with a childhood a home where we were loved and taken care of and pointed to Jesus. Train a child in the way that they shall go and they'll never depart from there. Praise the Lord. And that Bible prophecy came, that Bible text came true when I decided that I needed Jesus and I came back. I came back. Amen. Father, bless our church, bless me, bless Axel in a special way, and each member that affects me so. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for watching.
Thank you, Ken. You're welcome. I didn't hear you say cut. 